here tonight. The people that count. This meeting's called to order, and we will start with the roll call. Suzanne. Thank you. Mayor Levy? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Carr? Here, and my batteries are dead. Council Member Case? Here. Council Member Harvey? Here. Council Member Labar? Here. Council Member Sonier? Here. And Council Member Sawyer is absent. Thank you. technical assistance and then we will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance or we'll switch microphones with Mr. Wiley. Maybe not. Okay. We're golden. Mm -hmm. If you all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Thank you all for being here today. Uh, if you look at your agenda, uh, number 3A, our new superintendent is going to get introduced, although he's tied up at the high school with physicals, and he'll be walking in here in the next half hour or so, and we will wait until he gets here to manage that. Um, so we move on to additions, deletions, or corrections. I believe there are none. And Suzanne, the consent calendar. Yes, thank you, Mayor Levy. This evening on the consent calendar, we have the minutes of the June 28th City Council meeting with one minor correction that was brought to my attention um, on page 3, item number 5, instead of, weath instead of where, it should say weather. And so it's a minor correction. We will make that noted. And then also the second item on the consent calendar is the approval contract with AECOM to provide construction management services for the Park Street Improvement Project in the amount of $56,000 and $56,033. Thank you, Suzanne. Council, questions? No? Uh, just a quick one to Kip, if you wouldn't mind. Give us a perspective on this uh, contract. Um, as far as relative to <coughs> history. Okay. If you wouldn't um, mind, please. Thank you. So uh, we asked AECOM, who is our on-call engineer, um, to give us a proposal to provide these construction management services for this contract. Um, they also included in this the quality control, so all the concrete, all the subgrade, sub-base testing, and asphalt testing. So this is all included in this price is the uh, quality control and the construction management, and it's about 8% of the construction contract. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Could I have a motion to approve the consent calendar, please? I'll move to approve the consent calendar as presented. Second. And second, Suzanne. Thank you. Carr? Yes. Case? Yes. Harvey? Yes. Labar? Yes. Levy? Yes. Soignier? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Great. Thank you, Suzanne. Uh, no one finished business tonight. So we'll move on to ordinances on initial posting, and Sally's right here with us. Thank you, Mayor Levy. The first ordinance on initial posting is Ordinance 1332. This is uh, to vacate a utility and drainage easement in the Northwood subdivision between lots 93 and 94, and set the public hearing for August 16th. Sally, did you do B first? Am I, Oop. did I miss something? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I did. We can start B. with that one, that's fine. I'm sorry. My stack was in the wrong order. <laughs> <laughs> um, so item B is a request by Ronald Hayworth to vacate a drainage and utility easement between two lots which with Mr. Hayworth uh, owns in order to combine these lots. Great. Well, we'll take these one at a time. Council, any questions? This, these are on the agenda on initial posting, and we'll hear them in two weeks. If you have no question, we'll call for a motion to consider Ordinance 1332 on initial posting. Make a motion. Second. Thank you. Suzanne? Thank you. Case? Yes. Harvey? Yes. 
Labar? Yes. Levy? Yes. Sonier? Yes. Carr? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Okay, Sally. Thank you. Now we'll deal with item 7A, which is Ordinance 1324. This is a text amendment to the zoning regulations. It's a fairly simple uh, modification to the use matrix of 1809090 that deals with uh, storage compartments or uh, mini storage units. It's to change the name from mini storage to self storage and the primary, primary, primarily the uh, biggest change is to eliminate the 300 square foot maximum area for a storage compartment. The Planning Commission had uh, several uh, meetings associated with this, so it's been scrubbed fairly heavily and uh, the Planning Commission does recommend uh, this ordinance to move forward and we'll do a complete overview at the August 16th public hearing. Thank you, Sally. Council? I would just ask, may I? Go ahead. Thank you. I would just ask, is there a new maximum or is it? No. No. Okay. And and does that cause any concern for, for you? It does not. All um, self-storage uh, projects are a conditional use within the matrix, so they will always be reviewed by Planning Commission, and City Council will have the last uh, review. Thank you. Mm -hmm. A motion to approve Ordinance 1324, please. Make a motion to approve. Thank you, Paul. I'll second. In a second. Thank you, Kelly. Suzanne. Harvey? Yes. Lamar? Yes. Baby? Yes. Lanier? Yes. Carr? Yes. Case? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Suzanne. The updated agenda has removed item number 7C for today, so we move on and we have no public hearings. So we're on new business and Val Carr. Thank you, sir. Um, this is my first rodeo on writing a resolution, so uh, we, I've had a great team that I've been working with to uh, make sure that we're doing everything right here. Uh, this resolution is meant to supplement but not be in conflict with existing law, where it lacks, lacks specificity and clarity for all rules and procedures not detailed in existing law and past city resolutions. All prior related resolutions have been inspected for conflicts or preferences for inclusion in this document. It has also been suggested by Council Member Sawyer that this resolution and its successors will be valuable addition to the new Council Member Orientation Book. I wholeheartedly agree with this uh, idea of his. This written comprehensive historical document will serve for future Council to orient themselves to the problem or protocols, rules, and procedures expected well after all of us have left Council and City service. It seeks to be comprehensive in council procedures and gain control of decorum and people's agenda in running more business-like council meetings. Uh, Councilman Sawyer wrote a little brief uh, of statement that, uh, I'm just going to read part of it, uh, that he can't make it tonight, he's got a crucial engagement. No, uh, so Councilman Sawyer says, I would also like to say that I support the current draft of council rules and procedures. I see this as a training and reference guide for current and future councils. He's working on some other things like codes of ethics and things himself. We'll look at those later. Since this resolution was originally introduced in June 7th, 2018, much has transpired. On June 12th, 2018, a council work session was convened to work on suggestions and modifications to improve the content and mission of establishing a comprehensive document of city council rules of procedure. That meeting had interested council representatives, the city attorney, city manager, the city clerk, as well as journalists in attendance. It was quite informal, but was a comprehensive inspection of the draft content of that time. Subsequent modifications agreed at the work session were put into effect by the mayor pro tem and the city attorney and, and her staff. The city attorney and staff have inspected this text to avoid violation of any existing charter ordinance or other code or CR statute, which is very important 
with a thir very thorough review and resolution text was modified to comply with that goal. In recent days, the city planning director has also had valuable input modifications which are included in the resolution version you have for your consideration tonight. Uh, there are no additional city parties or departments affected by these rules and procedures who have not already had input included. We made a slight change from the original draft you saw, uh, uh, the final draft of a couple days ago. Uh, the city attorney and I uh, struck some legal language on page 10 that makes it uh, much uh, cleaner for legal purposes. Um, if you're looking for that change, it's very, very small under public comment. So to review, six of the seven council members, the city attorney and staff, the city manager, the city clerk, and the city planning director elected to contribute suggestions and modifications to this effort for the past six weeks. And therefore, we have in front of us tonight a very comprehensive document by a full team effort for this council guiding resolution. I now ask the interim city manager and then, if you will, the city planning director for any comments they may have on this effort in their involvement, please, before I introduce it for consideration. Sure. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Carr. I um, want to say thank you to the council for allowing me to be actively involved in this document. There's, I looked at it from two different roles. I looked at it as the city manager, and then I looked at it as the clerk, because there's a lot of different things that pertain to the clerk here. I am good with everything in the document. My input was received and is included in this document. And I do want to say that most municipalities that I am familiar with do have policy and procedures for their councils. So thank you for allowing me to be part of the process. Thank you. Thank you. Sally, Sally if you will. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mayor Pro Tem Carr, uh, I really appreciated the opportunity to take a look at these. I especially focused on the public hearing section so that it was consistent with uh, how the Planning Commission and the Board of Adjustment uh, do their public hearings in order to protect the integrity of the due process for both the applicant as well as for the community and the neighborhood and the citizens. So. Uh, uh, we simplified the public hearing process to reflect uh, what I call the 12-step process. And, uh, and so the presiding officer of the meeting has a very succinct step-by-step, -step, and the public also understands uh, the public hearing process. So everybody feels as if there is a fair and thorough review uh, for quasi-judicial cases. So thank you. It's uh, helpful to have this kind of document. Thank you to both of you for your input. It was tremendously valuable. Uh, addition to the city attorney was amazing, uh, all the things we got. Uh, the title of the proposed resolution, 830 Series 18, 2018, is a resolution establishing and revising the city council rules of procedure I ask that this resolution 830 series 218 be adopted tonight by City Council. Thank you. Council, questions, comments? I've got one. Uh, if you'll turn to page 7 um, of 15 in Council Meeting Agenda and Order of Business. Um, and moving the public comment up on the list, um, and just to give everybody a little history on that. Um, a long time ago we ran meetings just like we do now when Prentice Porter became mayor um, he decided that he wanted to move public comment up on the agenda um, which they did for a while and it caused this major problem and that's why we came back to what we're doing now um, when you have people in the audience that have big projects and are spending a lot of money and are doing things for the city in terms of developing and those kinds of things. Um, the thought was then that they should supersede, their efforts should supersede those of people that, that just want to come and comment. Um, the feeling was that their time is extremely valuable, not, not that everybody else's is not, but you can see where I'm coming from. Uh, the business point of view said, uh, let's get this business out of the way before we have public comment. Um, and so that's a discussion you can have. Uh, 
you can agree or disagree. I just was giving you a little history. I prefer public comment personally where it is right now, but um, I'm certainly not going to fall on my sword because I really like this document. Uh, what does everybody else think about that? Kelly? I would just say that um, a lot of the time, folks that are here for projects that might have public hearings or um, be earlier on the agenda as we, we present the agenda now often have billable hours. <clears throat> and those billable hours can be very expensive billable hours to those folks. So I have to, I have to agree with you, Neil. Um, and being on staff for so many years, um, I, I've seen that a lot. And I think we have the luxury, if we don't have things like that on the agenda, to move public comment up if we desire any time that we want and any meeting that we want. So to, or move it to the end if we have projects that might be that way. So I can, I can see your point of view and maybe, maybe leaving it as it is. And if we have an evening like this evening where we don't have a lot of business or we don't have people, a lot of people here, attorneys and, and engineers and those kinds of things that may be here to do a presentation on a project um, are not billing hours, we could move the public comment up. I don't know, we have that flexibility as a council. So that's just some thoughts I have. Thank you, Carol. Uh, that would be my, my feelings as well. The, the document is fine as it's written, but that, that change, because I have talked to previous mayors about this, is that um, the public hearing for cases, quasi-judicial or legislative, uh, those, as Kelly said, those, that's our primary responsibility on this, on this dias. Uh, but if we have a meeting where there is, there's no public hearing necessary, then move public comment up. But I would rather, as a document, move the public comment back to where we would have traditionally uh, placed it on the agenda. Thank you, Hillary. Ravel, I'm sorry. Yeah, we, uh, we, we had a discussion about this in the work session, uh, and it's been in a couple revisions. Uh, what happened was um, the uh, city clerk mentioned that this would be a very good thing to move up. Uh, I talked about having two public comment not items not on agenda, one in the beginning, one in the end. That's not workable because you never know when somebody's going to be uh, called up um, for some of the same reasons you mentioned. There, there's also, for, for the reasons Carol and, and uh, Ms. Uh, Case have mentioned, we have certain expertise people who, are, who would definitely are uh, Councilwoman Case and Councilwoman Harvey. Harvey, sorry. It's okay. um, It says I'm supposed to do that in here, and I'm already violating them stuff. We didn't sign but, it yet. <laughs> yeah, That's right. but anyway, um, so so we, uh, kind of a courtesy uh, in our thoughts in the work session, we were uh, putting this up for uh, consideration. The city clerk had some good points. I don't know if you want to step in here. I'm likewise not going to fall on my sword either. But um, what, what's your thoughts? Uh, to me, it's fine either way. Um, it's customary to have the public comments first on the agenda. Oh. So um, we've checked with other municipalities. We've looked at their agendas. This way, the one person that just wants to say something about how good KIPP did with their water break doesn't have to sit until midnight to say that. We don't have a lot of public comment of items not on the agenda currently, but it doesn't matter to me. It's your choice. Kelly? May I? And after hearing you say that, Maybe we have it as proposed in this document. And then if we have a, a lot of people in the audience, for instance, we had a whole front row of people that were probably billing hours recently on a public comment. And so maybe in that instance, we could take some public comment of just sh of a short nature or just move it to the end. Because we have, and give consideration to the applicant that's paying a significant amount of money to have the support team here that they have, and then we make that adjustment then. Because it seems like that would be less frequent than the public comment would be. I, that's another way to look at it. 
Okay. So I think that might be a great idea at this point. For clarification. Great idea. You know me, I need my clarification. <laughs> Absolutely. So we are going to try it this way. Yes. And then each council meeting we can adjust accordingly if needed. If needed. Okay. Because I okay. have an agenda to do Fine for the next me. council meeting. Fine with me. I was just offering some history and what happened in the past. Yeah, sure. thank you. That's appreciate yeah, that's, it. We're good. If everyone else is good with that. Okay. Um, Carol? I just caught this. Um, on page 11 uh, and then on over to page 12, there's a discussion of agenda preparation. And in uh, subparagraph B under section 7, uh, when we talk about agenda preparation, uh, what what role would the mayor pro tem have in approving the agenda? Is that in the absence of the mayor? Um, uh, say again, which section? The section, uh, B section 10. seven. Section seven on page eleven. Oh, B agenda 10. preparation. These are, these are basically people who uh, are ways uh, things can get on the agenda. Would that the mayor pro tem's role would be in the absence of the mayor? No, it, it's not the way it's specified. Why would the mayor pro tem have that role? Um, just as a council, by a council committee, but not by, so councilmen can't, but the mayor pro tem can, is that what you're saying? Yes. Well, two council members can. Mm. We, we had a whole list of people in our work session that we went through and put in this list. Well, the role of the mayor, I'm sorry, I'm speaking out of term, may I? Please. Um, the role of the mayor pro tem typically is to the mayor pro tem is actually a equal or a member of council un, unless the mayor is absent. Correct. And that's the role of the mayor pro tem. So I would suggest that the mayor pro tem would not have any um, authority or abilities over and above any other council member unless the mayor would be absent. Or that's if typically the role of the mayor pro tem. For the As I understand it, for the charter. And he could be included in item B3, so one of those two councilmen. One, yes. Right? And just keeping, I'm, I would look to the city attorney to clarify that, but it just seems that unless the mayor would be absent in any thing, then the mayor pro tem would be a, an equal in. So the mayor pro tem, when he has that hat on, really is only when the mayor is absent anyway. Correct. Correct. Then we need to specify that in the so. document or delete it altogether. So you would change and to or? Yes. And B3. And Last then, line. And then that is again identified in? 10. 10. So we could delete it from 10 and make it and or in section 7B3. Is that what you're suggesting? Yes. Uh, yes. 10 was 7. Uh, and that would just be section not, 7. That's not a personal B10. thing. That's a physician thing. Does that make sense? Just to be clear. clear. So, we're striking this. so we'll strike uh, by the mayor pro tem and then add on uh, 7B3 Mayor and or Mayor Pro Tem. Well, just or. or. Mayor or, okay, correct. Right. Mayor or Mayor Pro Tem if the mayor's not available. And Mr. Mayor, there is another reference too in uh, Section 7 Agenda Preparation that the informal draft preliminary agenda is subject to review by the presiding officer and by the Mayor Pro Tem. I think, again, it should say or. Or, or the, correct, which is where. And that is which? That's on page 11, section 7, subsection A, at the very end of the sentence. By the mayor. Or by the mayor. Correct. Thank you. So that means there are three ands that, are two ands that change to or. There's mm -hmm. a uh, yes. 7A, second to the last line, reciting officer, or the mayor pro tem. Correct. And that, for clarification, my understanding that means in the absence of the mayor. Right. And then in B3, the last line, mayor or mayor pro tem. Correct. And then delete 7B10. 7B10 because that automatically we got them taken care of in 7B3. Mayor pro tem under the charter. Yes, okay. right. Anything it probably would in the other 
other cases as well, but if you want to call that out explicitly, you can. Council, anything else? This is a great document. Uh, look for a motion to approve. So right. moved. I'll second. And a second? Suzanne? Thank you. Labar? Yes. Levy? Yes. Sonier? Yes. Carr? Yes. Case? Yes. Harvey? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, great. Thanks very much, Val, and everyone that Thank participated you. in this process. We much appreciate it. Um, okay, public comment on items not on the agenda, and we'll start with Tanner Coy. Tanner Coy, 240 East U.S. Highway 24, Wooden Park. Good evening, Mayor and Council, staff, and uh, all you fine citizens. Uh, just a few brief comments tonight, informative uh, for your information, sharing that yesterday at 5 p.m. in Woodland Park, uh, we had a very interesting meeting downtown that uh, included representatives from Keep Woodland Park Beautiful, uh, Woodland Park Arts Alliance, the Historic Preservation Committee, uh, Ute Pass Historical Society, the Harvest Center, Main Street, the DDA, city staff, and city council. We met for the purpose of discussing some common goals related to the general health, safety, and prosperity of Woodland Park. The discussion was very healthy, the takeaway is positive, and the results included unanimous consensus that pedestrian safety and traffic calming, cleanliness, maintenance, and beautification, Woodland Station improvement and use, historic preservation, promotions and marketing, and the proper planning and funding of these things continue to present challenges keeping us as a community from our goals that we can do better and we intend to continue working together hoping to exploit the advantages of better communication and teamwork. Our next meeting will be held on August 15th at 5 p.m. If we make progress, it'll likely result in some great ideas and budget considerations at some point for private parties and for the participating organizations, possibly including the city. The lodging tax revenue is for specific uses consistent with the items I've mentioned and is likely among the revenue source uh, sources in, that will be included in recommendations or requests that might later be presented for your consideration. You know we're entering budget season, so those are my comments, that's all. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to say I appreciate the opportunity to be able to sit in on the, the meeting. I look forward to the meeting. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, Elijah Murphy. Good evening, Council. Elijah Murphy, 204 West Midland Avenue, Woodland Park, Colorado. Um, with all the excitement the last few weeks, there was some uh, stuff that kind of got skipped over, but I wanted to come in and let you all know that, uh, Sally, thank you so much for uh, the permit streamline process. We had a very successful uh, rodeo dance this year. We raised a lot of money for the rodeo, and it was just an outstanding event. No incidences whatsoever, and uh, yeah, just thanks for the making that so much easier in our lives. Um, one of the things that we, uh, we really have a problem with here in this town is the uh, availability of affordable housing for our uh, I guess our worker bees, you could say, our lower income workers who work for people like myself and Neil uh, in the restaurant industry. Um, I don't know quite how to go about this, but uh, if we could possibly 
talked to Karis about building dorms. I don't know whether whether they're uh, looking at that, but it would seem like it would take a huge burden off of, of you know the city as far as providing affordable housing and stuff. Um, I, kn I know a lot of my workers. I pay them as much as I as I possibly can, and it is it is a little bit of a burden on them. Um, but I'm just dropping that thought out there as something you know to possibly help some of our lower income folks here and make uh, make it a more attractive place for some of those people to move up here the high chateau fire that was quite uh, that was quite an incident I had the opportunity to go out there and uh, witness the fire itself and I was setting it was I guess it must have been a Sunday night yeah about midnight I was getting ready to go to bed and I saw the activity in the flurry going on and I saw where Pepe was uh, taking his food truck out to the High Chateau fire and I was like okay he's gonna last about one day and there was no support for these guys so I began organizing on the uh, got on Facebook and began organizing some stuff and by the time it was all said and done I had the wrestling team a veterinarian uh, and a whole slew of other volunteers coming to the restaurant and people were so gracious the customers were so gracious because we set up actually a food assembly line in the restaurant um, on Monday we delivered 160 uh, American chop suey meals the fastest and easiest thing I could prepare with bread and butter and salad and everything for the uh, workers and we provided 160 bag lunches for that night I got home and got to bed about 10 o'clock at 1 o'clock I was back up and I showed up at the uh, Ute 12 volunteers from the community showed up 12 people who had nothing better to do than come in at 2 o'clock in the morning and make 200 meals for the firefighters and that was for breakfast that was pancakes eggs and bacon the uh, and we also did an additional 200 bag lunches for the next day this community pulled together and um, I mean Diane Beaumont threw $500 at it the community paid for all of the food through donations I just opened up the business and let them come in and directed the activity and did the delivery stuff. Folks, we, we have a heck of a Woodland Park. You know, I just wanted to come up here and make that public knowledge that these people came in and did an outstanding job and provided that. Now, my house was 10 miles from the fire, no big deal, but when it comes to our first responders, I think that uh, you know us being there for them and being ready to go into action to back them up because backside support is probably one of the most important things they ever need. So the uh, special thanks to the wrestling team. Uh, I can't remember what the veterinarian's, uh, her veterinarian's name is that showed up, but uh, I just wanted you all to know that the community pulled together and did an awesome job to support that uh, fighting that high chateau for fire. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was quite impressive. And thank you, Murphy, for everything you did to coordinate that. And, and just for general knowledge, um, affordable housing is an issue nationwide. And to indicate that the Karis Bible College um, is at fault or the reason or they're the ones that should make a difference, I, I, I think is wrong. Um, at some point, and when they're ready, because these things are market driven, um, there will be affordable housing somewhere, somehow. Um, it's going to take tremendous effort. It's going to start with the feds and how they can provide things like tax credits for developers because, you know what, if you ask a developer to build affordable housing, um, that's a beautiful thing. He can make a little bit of money. He'd rather build a million dollar house. And he's thinking about him. He's not thinking of the, about the people, Mur Murph, that work for me and you. So the issue is one that is is significant. There's nobody that can doubt that. How we're going to deal with that moving forward? If you talk to any mayor in this in this community, in the state, in the nation, I think you'll find that everybody is trying to find a way to do exactly what you're after. Um, and so, you know what, anybody has great ideas, um, please let us know. I continue to meet with the mayors through the communities that, that surround us and, and uh, we're doing everything we can to try to figure out what the next steps might be. But 
certainly something that affects all of us and I just want to make that make that clear um, I have no other people signed up tonight is there anyone here that would like to make a comment if not we'll move on to mayor's reports and I'm going to start with the last thing on this list and that's Tuesday August 14th um, another meeting for those that would like to come and it's an informational meeting um, relative to the deer population in our community so a presentation from Tim Kronig uh, from the Department of Wildlife uh, it's going to be about an hour hour and a half um, there's some discussion that there's going to be a task force or there's been a task force or there's steps moving in any direction let me assure everybody that that's not the case we're trying to identify the problem trying to communicate it and then move forward and trying to do the right thing um, and so this will be the next obvious step so Thursday August 14th you pass cultural center from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock if you're interested in that deer population and how we can move forward we'd love to see you there tomorrow and every Friday until about the first middle of September I'm not sure in um, end of September thank mm -hmm. you uh, from 8 to 1 at the w Memorial Park the Woodland Park Farmers Market which I always say is one of the greatest that I ever attend seems like everybody in the community is is always there somehow so we will see you all tomorrow from 8 to 1 uh, this weekend there's a number of events starting with the annual vino and notes in Memorial Park that starts at noon and runs till 6 o'clock and I think our assistant or acting city manager is going to say a few words about 3 o'clock over there and uh, it's a great event lots and lots of people I talked to Ben today and expecting upwards of 1500 people and the weather's supposed to be great so look forward to seeing you all there the fourth and the fifth this weekend the Mountain Arts Festival at the U Pass Cultural Center um, clearly this is a very busy weekend in Woodland Park so uh, from 10 o'clock to 5 o'clock at the Cultural Center also the fourth and the fifth is the Critter Rescue Roundup at the Dinosaur Resource Center uh, that starts at 9 o'clock and runs through 4 on Saturday and Sunday that event runs from 10 to 3 that's a great event in addition a uh, Wednesday August 8th uh, the annual touch a truck day at Meadowood Sports Complex another great event for our young kids they have monster trucks over there they have all kinds of vehicles that the kids can jump on and and uh, get to play on and it's just uh, it's just a lot of fun I was there last year and everybody had a great time Friday August 10th a week from Friday a uh, movie above the clouds is Star Wars 6 o'clock to 1030 the last Jedi at the Midland Pavilion uh, Saturday August 11th the 29th annual Mayor's Cup the mayor does not run in this race <laughs> the registration begins at 730 and the races start at 830 with the little kids running 50 yard dashes and then 100 yard dashes even if you don't run it's it's kind of fun to be out there uh, there's a lot of great stories around the people that are that are running in that race so um, keep that in mind for a week from Saturday also the jazz big band um, at mid at the Midland Pavilion the Woodland music series also that day and it starts at 11 o'clock so literally right after the race starts the uh, jazz big band on Saturday August 11th that said um, our new superintendent has just walked in and so it is my pleasure and privilege um, I've got a uh, um, a little synopsis of, of your family and your life that I think you wrote is that right Steve what? Occasionally, people are hard up for someone to listen to as a speaker. You know, I'll start. Why don't I start this with Gwen Dowdy? Gwen, why don't you come up as school board member? I don't know if you want to read this or I will. Uh, I have one. Why don't you? You're in charge. Okay. Just give us your name and address to start. Great. Gwen Dowdy, 19 Ponderosa Circle, Woodland Park, 8863. I will read this. I'm not a very good impromptu person. Good evening, honorable council members, Mr. Mayor and staff. I am here on behalf of the Woodland Park School District Board of Education. As you know, Dr. Bowman, our past superintendent has retired. So as a board, we had a very important job to do in hiring our new superintendent. 
much as you have done recently. We have several things that we were looking for in our candidate, and one of them was the ability to embrace four critical areas based on a collection of community data called the Stakeholder Survey. These four areas are academic success, which is maximizing readiness for post-secondary accomplishments, educator talent, which is the recruitment and retention of highest quality staff by fostering an exceptional, positive, and empowering work environment, student social emotional growth, which is to establish and hold high expectations across the district, promoting a culture of collective excellence and communication, bolstering relationships through purposeful communication internally and externally with district stakeholders. Our new superintendent has embraced these four stakeholder areas of emphasis and has already made some exceptional positive changes which have really energized our staff. So if I could describe our new superintendent from the start of his tenure, I would have to say he has been a positive catalyst for change in our district. He is solution focused and during the short time at the helm has been the transformational leader that we need. So it is my greatest honor to introduce to you the superintendent of Woodland Park School District, Mr. Steve Wolf. I'll tell you, my, it's more than my heart can, can express how happy I am to be part of this community. And it's been time with, with our board and the people I get to uh, meet and hang out with at, at, at the school district. It's been time with Miles. Uh, he only had to pull me over to, to get me there, but he, when he got me pulled <laughs> over, then we, uh, we, then we went from there. But no, uh, and the people that really deeply care about this community. And, and I'm one of those folks now. I have a son that's lived here. Uh, and about around here and it's worked at the dinosaur museum for the last 10 years and i have dear friends here in town and uh when the opening came an opportunity to come be a part of woodland park guys this is a dream job and i tell people that sometimes you may not realize that you're a fish in water you've got amazing things happening here if you ever got a fish ever gets out of water they know they're out of water and uh and it's not fun I came from out of water. Don't let them. Don't tell them that in Kansas. But but I, I'm here here now, and I'm in water, and I'm loving it. And so we have an opportunity to make a tremendous difference. We're making uh, a few changes that we we think will uh, greatly benefit our kids, and that's what we're about. Our kids, they want to be seen, heard, and loved, and we're going to make sure that happens, and make sure that they have an opportunity to grow to chase their dreams and uh, chase their passions and, and, and that's our goal and we're going to make it happen so we're excited about that. I've had an opportunity to, to spend some time with our board members and, uh, and and with you guys I'll tell you what I'd love getting to know people so if there's a time you want to go have coffee or whatever you holler I'll make the time on my schedule and we'll go and uh, I'd love to get to know you and some of your dreams for the community and opportunities for us to, to continue not only to be as great as you are now but take it to whole new heights. So, uh, and I really appreciate what you've done so far. Thank you for embracing me as a community, and and I think I wrote that for her too. Uh, and, uh, and so we're good to go. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Of course, my concern I didn't ask him. Making a lot of changes. I'm not sure if he's changing the baseball coach. Oh, they're doubling, they're, they're doubling the budget. I heard he is. He's already on it. Just, no, you're, you can't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. I already the budget, heard, so. Neil, they found a great replacement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys probably want him to stay coaching. He's going to switch out right here. <laughs> <laughs> Keep him distracted. Very I'll, perceptive. I'll take you up on very the perceptive. I'm number one. Thanks very much, and, and honestly, welcome. We're as excited to have you as you are to be here, and uh, I know you've made great changes already, and, and good luck to you. And just know that you have the support of everybody that's sitting up here um, and probably everybody in the audience, and so we appreciate that open-door policy. Uh, we'll be looking forward, and uh, this is going to be a win-win, so we're excited about it. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll move on to council reports and is that nothing, Mr. Mayor. Kelly? All right. I have nothing, thank you. Carol. Um, I did attend a historic preservation committee meeting this week and we did talk about the lodging tax and and ways to, to possibly focus it in the coming budget year. Um, Sally, anything else out of it? No, we're working on our proposal. Yes, we're working on our budget. <laughs> so um, 
one go. Thank you. Hillary? No, you covered everything. Thank you. Paul? <laughs> yes, I do, ma'am. I was honored to be part of a committee that brought my projects on traffic and not being a big log jam. On the outdoor activities that they can. Very hard. and to have a sustainable town that works for all of us. So I just want to say thank you, Seth. Yeah, the, the thanks goes to you, Paul, um, because a lot of these things have needed leadership over the past few years, and you've stepped up and done it, and I know Norm's been a great, great resource, and, and what we can do through PPACG in all working together, uh, we are going to get a lot of things done, but you're the one that's leading it, and look forward to that leadership in the future. So thank you very much. Okay, uh, we'll move on to the city attorney report. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I have a brief, brief report, and then I will uh, follow that with a couple questions um, to Council so that I can get some direction from Council. So um, recently, Council received information from citizens regarding concerns about short-term rentals operating in the city. The city has no short-term rental regulations. Short-term rentals of one's short-term rental of one's residence is allowed in Woodland Park. Anecdotally, I can tell Council that there are many jurisdictions facing this issue having to do with short-term rentals. Some jurisdictions have decided to adopt short-term rental regulations, others have not. This information as presented to Council leads to my two questions, which I will tell you what those are and then I will present them and, and get your responses. So the first question is whether Council would like to hold a work session to discuss short-term rental regulations. The second is whether council would like the staff and city attorney to simply move forward with a draft of regulations regarding short-term rentals and bring that ordinance to you. So those are the two questions that I would be seeking your direction on. And so I will then ask council um, the first question, and that is whether council would like to hold a work session to discuss short-term rental regulations. That would be, I would be in favor of that. Everybody in favor of that? Anybody not? If we do that, I would, I would hope that we would use all means possible to encourage public participation because they're the ones that are really living with that, or some are and some probably are not, but it would be very valuable to have that input from them. Um, that's all I would add. I, and otherwise, I would think that a workshop would be beneficial to give that opportunity. I think that kind of moots the second question. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Thank you. And, and I would also say that in preparation for that work session, I would think that um, your planning department and planning director would 
be able to approach, and so would your city attorney, be able to approach a number of communities who have already gone down this path. Uh, so we wouldn't be starting necessarily from scratch. So I would um, ask for that direction to planning staff and to the city attorney in preparation for that. And then I would just leave to the city manager um, scheduling that. Thank you, council. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank much. You. Okay, we'll move on to the city manager's report. Suzanne? Thank you. We have a few updates for the council this evening. <clears throat> Excuse me. First, we're going to start with Kip. He has two different updates to give you this evening. Actually, I'm going to add three uh, yes. to that. So I added one last one at the end here. Um, so three projects, updates. I just have a uh, quick uh, couple photos to show you in regards to the projects. So the first project is the PRV uh, at Morning Sun and Sun Valley, uh, pressure uh, reducing valve. Uh, as council recalls, uh, we had budgeted around $200,000 for this project. We received one proposal for about 360-ish ballpark. Uh, we did not accept that proposal. We did this in-house. Um, our staff is very capable of doing these projects, so um, that has started. And here's a couple photos. Um, the photo on the left here is actually a uh, it's a drill device where they they actually tap a water main that's in service. So no customers are out of service while this happens, and we tie we just tie new infrastructure into existing infrastructure without disrupting service. And that actually happened today. Um, on the left is the drill bit um, that drills into the main. And then on the right, if you actually rotate that 90 degrees to the right, um, the pipe that you see with the, uh, the black spacers around it is actually on the bottom of the vault. Um, and we had to put in these two pieces of pipe in the exact location because as you can see, the tolerances are very small. Um, so those had to be in place and then the vault shipped and then set in with a crane, which I'll show you here in a minute. Um, here is the, uh, the gentleman doing the wet tap in the main. Uh, and here what, here's what it looks like when he is done. There's a valve there um, that's tied in. So that's an 8-inch water main with an 8-inch line coming off of it. Here on the left, the uh, vault showed up. Um, and the crane is there to, to lift it into its uh, resting place. And on the right is the, I'll just call it the guts of the vault. Um, so that's, this is what reduces the pressure. We're a mountain town, we have lots of elevations. So the, the, the lower you are from the tank, the higher the pressure in your line. And these stations uh, reduce that pressure so um, we can continue lower, uh, lower pressures and uh, good service. Okay, on the left, uh, the vault's in the ground. And on the right, they're placing the lid on it. Um, that took about, oh, uh, about three hours to do just the do the, the setting into place and uh, everything went very well. Uh, I was very proud of the field service crew for having the uh, everything in place when it needed to be and um, being ready to do this. So they did a very, very good job. And then the second project is the, the tank painting that we budgeted for. Uh, Gold Hill Tank, this used to be a white tank. Now it's brown and you can barely even tell it's there. So I think it was originally painted like a light blue um, to kind of blend in with the sky. However, uh, the, the sun had bleached it more into a white, and uh, we decided to change that up and go with a more natural color. Um, as you look up at the hillside, you don't even know it's there. And then lastly, uh, a little update on the wastewater treatment plant expansion project. Um, that project was completed on time and under budget. So uh, we are just awaiting a fire inspection on the generator and the facility itself. There wasn't a whole lot done inside related to fire. So we're awaiting those inspections. Um, so very pleased to report to you that that went well and the groundbreaking is Tuesday at noon. Or the, not the, ground, the ribbon cutting, I apologize. <laughs> Tuesday at noon. Val? It goes by fast. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate you uh, doing these in-house things. We've talked about this for a, a year or so, and this is just tremendous. I'm, I'm glad you're able to do that, and I look forward to many more opportunities. Thank you. Mr. Mayor? Yes, ma'am. My office is there, and I was in, not inconvenienced, but did use the detour very frequently during this project and had the luxury of witnessing a lot of it, and they did a great job and very efficient. Um, very clean. The project was left very safe and very clean every night. And um, good job. And I know that that really has a lot of oomph to 
of morale and they feel they're not just reading meters and fixing things, they're doing great things and I know that's good for them. So congratulations and good job doing that. I'll pass that along. Yes. Paul. Did you share any ideas on the safety? For the, for the PRV? Um, PRV itself costs around 90000 uh, with additional asphalt, concrete, and just other materials. I'd say we'd be around uh, around 150. So to the budget, we saved about 50000 To the proposed bid, we saved around 200000 Good job. Thank you very much. So, Mayor, two things I'd like to add to it. One thing that um, when Kip shows the pictures of the vault being lifted and placed into the ground, Tell, them, tell the council how much that vault weighs. It was about 30,000 pounds. So it looks like it's nothing in the picture, but it's 30,000 pounds. I thought that was pretty impressive. And the other thing I would like to just add on is that the public and everyone is invited to the ribbon cutting on Tuesday at the wastewater treatment plant. We will be having, um, the chamber will be hosting it, and we will be having hamburgers and hot dogs. Our city guys will be cooking for you so please please join us we'd love to have you there we're going to have a update now from sally regarding um, some ppacg information to add to council member Sonia. yes thank you um, i have the pleasure of now serving at the ppacg transportation advisory committee in light of the fact of not having an engineer so i'm filling in and uh, Councilman Sonier and I have been able to attend uh, the last meeting. What uh, Councilman Sonier spoke about are the call for projects for the 2045 transportation plan. So we have to plan 25 years in advance. And in the 2040 plan, our region, our MPO, had over close to 300 projects. So it's very competitive. And the next step is that the staff will begin to evaluate, PPACG staff evaluate the many, many hundreds of projects that get submitted throughout this region, Woodland Park down through Colorado Springs and El Paso County. And then TAC gets to look at the scores and decide on that list which projects are fiscally constrained. In other words, those projects that could possibly be funded by federal dollars. And there are always matches for these projects. So we have to be very careful about how we plan to have the funding for the match should we get into the fiscally constrained list. So it's, it's a very interesting process. It's pretty laborious process. Uh, and the final list will end up with the board, which uh, the mayor and mayor and councilman Sonier are involved in. So I just wanted to express a little bit about the process and uh, thank councilman Sonier for really taking the leadership on this. Thank you, Sally. And we have a report from Chief DeYoung. Good evening, Council. I'm going to try to keep it short. Um, I want to touch just briefly on the High Chateau fire. It's already been touched on in here, but um, being up there the number of days that I was there, it was incredible the support from the community, as Murph was talking about, and all the different first responders that came together. Uh, most people don't realize the stuff that's going on behind the scenes, so I figured I'd just write down a few times to give you an idea how quick um, we were able to help them out. So at about 12.35, I got a call from the sheriff. His call to me was, hey, I've got some guys that are trying to evacuate a subdivision. The deputies are cut off. They can't get to the other, other side of it. Can you send me some help? Absolutely. He said, send me as many as you got. So that was at 12.35. By 12.41, we were sending eight, dep eight officers out there, lights and siren to get out there. We had people from when he called me until we um, arrived. It was only 78 minutes. And we were helping uh, to do that evacuation. That's just the police officers that were doing that. The other part of that is, is when we get a call like that that's that big and, and that active, uh, dispatch centers are typically overrun quite quickly. Um, and just on that note, we had dispatchers over at the sheriff's office in 31 minutes. We had two dispatchers helping them out to handle the huge volume of calls that were coming in there. Um, you know, they did an awesome job. I just can't brag enough about the police officers and what they did. 
Um, Officer Huber and I handled calls that evening for about eight hours. Everybody else left the town and took care of the, the rest of the county. So um, kudos to all the, the employees that were involved in that, as well as the community members that came out. The amount of support was just overwhelming. There was cases and pallets and boxes of supplies everywhere you looked over there. Um, one of the, the things that Mr. Wolf forgot to tell you was that the first time he and I met was driving out there to the incident command center so he could get an idea of what was going on. So um, he got to see that firsthand. And it all comes down to relationships, whether it's with the school districts, the community, the other emergency responders around here. We had the Rampart fire, it was about a week or two ago. Um, that burned one eighth of a mile inside of El Paso County. That almost became ours. And fortunately, the wind was pushing it away from our city. So. Um, we had a lot of support up there right away. We had the sheriff's office. We had all of our fire departments. Uh, Forest Service was on the scene. They were getting air assets. So just a great, um, great community to live in. It's wonderful to have that kind of support from everybody. Um, and then last, I just want to finish with, next Tuesday we'll be having National Night Out. And that's going to be at Memorial Park at 5 o'clock. And we'll have a lot of police officers, firefighters. The sheriff's office is partnering with us uh, this year. And so we'll have the sheriff there and a lot of his folks. And uh, we love to see it. We had about 800 to 1,000 people there last year. Time. Uh, about 5 o'clock is when it's going to kick off. 5 to 8. Thank Chief, you. Chief, I've yes. got a question. Uh, for the public, what is the best way to get up updates on uh, disasters like the two fires? Is it web page? Is it Twitter? Is it Nixle? Excellent question. Um, Nixle and Everbridge. So if you're signed up on Nixle, that's the best way to, to um, get the ongoing text messages. And then Everbridge is our reverse 911 system, and so that's another way for us to put stuff out. We try to put stuff out on Facebook, but I gotta tell you, there is so much going on that it is nearly impossible to answer a lot of questions. So we'll try to put something out for those that are relying on Facebook or Twitter, um, but it is hard for us to respond back to you as quick as possible. So please be patient with us. But if you're on Nixle and you're on Everbridge, those are the, the two primary ways we communicate um, life-threatening emergencies. Thanks. Thank you, Chief. Two final things. I would like to remind council and the public that we are having our first budget work session on Wednesday, August 8th. It's um, the first session we're having regarding goals and objectives for the 2019 budget and I'd like to mention that our city manager to be Mr. Tangerman is going to be with us that evening so it'll be a nice start for him at the beginning of the budget process and then the last thing I'd like to mention is City Hall will be closed on Monday from 1 to 3 the staff has to participate in some mandatory training so we put that out everywhere on social media so the public should know that now. but thanks and that's all we have mayor great thank you very much um, just once again, thanks, thanks to the chamber for sponsoring the the Department of Wildlife meeting on the 14th, and also for managing the uh, ribbon cutting that we're going to have on Tuesday. That's going to be that's going to be a great event. So thanks, thanks, Deb, for one last thing before we leave tonight. Um, most of you probably heard there was an event in Colorado Springs last night where an officer uh, was shot in the head and um, is still in the hospital and has survived surgery but Kim Duzel um, was the was the one that was shot last night a uh, young officer in Colorado Springs and let's just take a minute um, because you know all the things that, that Miles talked about all the things um, that we have in our community right we're not going to have without folks like this so let's just take a minute to thank them in our own hearts okay that's great you all have a great weekend